So I'm going to talk about the libertarian principle of secession. For a century and a half, the idea of secession has been systematically demonized among the American public. The government schools spin fairy tales about the indivisible union and the wise statesmen who fought to preserve it. Decentralization is portrayed as unsophisticated and backward, while nationalism and centralization are made to seem progressive and inevitable. When a smaller political unit wishes, uh, excuse me, when a smaller political unit wishes to withdraw from a larger one, its motives must be disreputable and base, while the motives of the central power seeking to keep that unit in an arrangement it does not want are portrayed as selfless and patriotic if they're discussed at all. As usual, disinformation campaigns are meant to take to make potentially liberating ideas appear toxic and dangerous, conveying the message that anyone who seeks acceptance and popularity ought to steer clear of whatever it is, in this case, secession, the regime has condemned. For when we see a pro- but when we set the propaganda aside, we discover the support for secession means simply this. It is morally illegitimate to deploy state violence against individuals who choose to group themselves differently from the way the existing regime chooses to group them. They prefer to live under a different jurisdiction. Libertarians consider it unacceptable to aggress against them for this. The libertarian principle of secession is not exactly embraced with enthusiasm by the people and the institutions I call regime libertarians. Although these people tend to be located in and around the beltway, regime libertarians are are not a matter of geographic location, which is why I coined this special term for them. The regime libertarian believes in the market economy, more or less, but talk about the Federal Reserve or Austrian business cycle theory, and he gets fidgety. His magazine or institute would far rather invite Janet Yellen to a cocktail reception than Ron Paul to a lecture. The regime libertarian loves the idea of reform, whether it's the Fed, government schools, or whatever, but he flees from the idea of abolition. Why? That's just not respectable. He spends his time advocating this or that tax reform effort, for example, but never discusses the idea of repealing or lowering existing taxes. It's too tough to be a libertarian when it comes to anti-discrimination law, given how much flack one is liable to take over it. So he'll side with left liberals, even though that's completely incompatible with his stated principles. He's anti-war, sometimes. He can be counted on to support the wars, however, that have practically defined the American regime and which remain popular among the general public. He sups in happy concord with supporters of the most egregiously unjust wars, but his blood boils in moral outrage at someone who told an off-color joke 25 years ago. I suppose you can guess where our regime libertarians stand on secession. Since the modern American regime emerged out of the violent suppression of the attempted secession of 11 states, he too is an opponent of secession. If cornered, he may grudgingly endorse secession at a theoretical level, but in practice he generally seems to support only those acts of secession that have the approval or connivance of the CIA. Mentioned secession and the subject immediately turns to the Southern Confederacy, whose moral enormities the regime libertarian proceeds to denounce. Insinuating that supporters of secession must be turning a blind eye to those enormities. But every libertarian worthy of the name opposes any government support for slavery, centralization, inflation, conscription, taxation, or the suppression of speech and press. It goes without saying. We shouldn't be surprised by this kind of charge, though. Accusing libertarians of sympathy for slavery because they oppose wars of centralization is the intellectual cousin of the regime's familiar claim that opponents of the war in Iraq must have secretly supported Saddam Hussein, or that opponents of U.S. intervention in World War I were just apologists for the Kaiser. We expect juvenile nonsense like this from neoconservatives and from the regime itself. When it emerges from the pens of alleged libertarians, It says far more about them and their own allegiances than it does about us.